Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Toronto-based jazz guitarist Jay Yu and pianist Mark Kozakiewicz. This duo talked about their new 2022 CD called Dual Unity. It's their debut album, and they explore jazz harmony and creativity in a duo setting. Dual Unity is the same name as the group and is heavily influenced by Brazilian music and contemporary jazz. They open up about this project, how they hooked up, and so much more. Enjoy. Hey, thanks for sending out the music. I've really enjoyed it, and thanks for taking a minute out. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, I have here with me uh, Mark. Hey, Joe. Well. I'm here. How's it going? Hey, Mark. What's up? How much? How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks, guys, for taking a minute out. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You bet. So, just for the sake of those out there that are going to be listening to this and we know who is who, can you just both quickly introduce yourself and your instrument and then we can, uh, we can, we can move on from there? Sure. Uh, so my name is Jay Yu. Um, I went to school here in Pro- Toronto, to uh, <laughs> University of Toronto for jazz performance. I play guitar and I'm active in uh, Toronto. And uh, I'm Mark and yes, Jay plays guitar, I play piano and... Um, I didn't go for uh, the school for music, but I met Jay at U of T as well. And that's, yeah, that's how we met, and that's how we started. Let's talk about the brand new album. It's coming out during you know this time where everything's kind of opening up. The world's coming coming together, dual right. unity. And I want to know during this particular time. I know all of these you know musicians and artists have been trying to find the right time and way to release music that we've been kind of sitting on for a while, but it is coming out during an advantageous time. So how does this release feel for you? For us, back when uh, COVID started, we were thinking about, you know, trying to make an album, and we were starting to work on it pre-COVID, but then when it happened, it kind of split us up because I had to go live outside of the city for a while. And then when things started getting back to kind of normal. We started working at it again, and we realized that we had actually written a bunch of songs during that weird period. And so this album has a lot of uh, possibly some emotion from that time. Yeah, now that we have an album, we're looking for, we were looking forward to finally finishing it just in time for things to open up. And, you know, we have uh, some gigs coming up. So it's kind of a culmination of all that, um, all that writing and all that uh, uh, recording that we've done during this weird period and yeah we're just looking forward to showing it to the world now there's elements of brazilian music contemporary jazz it's a very unique feel and setting that you have set up talk to me a little bit about what your artistic approach to this actual collective of songs was well uh i think mark <laughs> likes the brazilian side of jazz more and uh, I'm more of the, the contemporary, like, modern jazz kind of uh, guy. And uh, I think, like, we both bring different, you know, uh, styles of jazz into this uh, little project. And, like, it turned out to be a pretty unique thing, I think. <laughs> For the, from the Brazilian stuff, it really is a Brazilian and jazz combination. So although we, we do listen and kind of get some inspiration from the traditional Brazilian side, it is a bit different when you actually mix it together with jazz. And in my opinion, I think it's a really good mix. And we're, I think in the future, we're actually looking forward to kind of delving more deeply into the traditional side of, of the Brazilian music and seeing if we can combine it more with uh, you know, the modern stuff that Jay likes. But that is generally where our inspiration comes from for a lot of these tunes on the album. How did you two really kind of come together and and fuse this union, and and why does it work so well for you two? I think we've uh, we've been working on this for a, a number of years actually. Now, like I think we met in uh, 2014, and we started playing as a duo. We, like we played some uh, like gigs, you know, here and there. Mark was bringing these uh, these like bossa nova songs, some like traditional Brazilian music, and some like earlier. Brazilian jazz music. And, like, we were just workshopping it for like many years. Uh, every time we had a rehearsal, we would spend like a few hours just like trying to arrange a song, arrange a bossa nova song. And like I think we grew from there. I tried to do like some reharmonization on the bossa nova stuff, and then we would change the melody, like add vamps or like different sections to the music. And I think it's just like um, just years of 
trying to make it work. <laughs> yeah, and overall, I think it's our interactivity that makes it work uh, very well, and that's something that we developed over the years. Um, I mean, if, when we first met, I think, and when we first started playing together, it kind of clicked that we can have this uh, very interactive performance style where we, we both have like a, an even contribution in, in some way. It's not like one of us is a front man or anything like that, where we really try to uh, play off of each other and you know, contribute equally to the performance. But yeah, it, it just I think it just works overall, and we continue to make it work for all these years. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, it's coming out officially on a Friday the 13th, May the 13th. Yes. And uh, which I was born on Friday the 13th, so I don't have any fear. <laughs> That's how I entered the world, so I'm good. Um, and, and I think the pandemic actually started on a Friday the 13th. It was March 13th. It is, right? so, yeah. <laughs> March. There you go. All right. Yeah, I, that was my memory, too. So, so talk to me a little bit about Toronto. You know, I always hear so much good, you know, Obviously, everyone around the world looks at Kansas City and understands our lore and what we've been through, and it's actually a pretty thriving jazz town right now. But mm. I always hear so many good things about Toronto. What has Toronto done for you to, to foster and to kind of allow you to exude your creative jazz forces? Well, I mean, Toronto's a very diverse uh, city, <laughs> uh, music-wise and like, culturally-wise. Um, like, I would just go out and like see a show maybe like multiple shows a day and they're like all so different and unique and it's just like it just inspires me so much you know all my colleagues and like all my uh, uh people who have been playing before me like mm -hmm. with that like all these professional musicians they're you know so diverse <laughs> it just inspires me so much um, yeah it's great. there's a really good scene here and throughout the pandemic everyone's been very supportive you know people have been in the summers, they let a lot of the places let us play outside on the patios and stuff like that. We probably had a bigger lockdown here than you did over there in the, in the States. But, yeah, overall, very, very great scene, great people. And now that summer's coming and things have really opened up, we're looking forward to, uh, you know, playing with, with each other and with other musicians in the city. should be great. Yeah. So let's say you come to Kansas City and you do a live show here. You kind yeah. of have to craft together kind of a, a description to entice people to fill the seats in one of our premier venues to play a show. How would you describe your show? What would you say to somebody that is kind of going through the possibilities of live entertainment in Kansas City to come see you? I, I think it comes down to our ability to really have an interactive performance. Like we Obviously, we, we don't get the audience involved directly. We don't give them instruments, but I feel like the audience can really feel the that emotion that we're trying to provide when it's in a duo. You know, because in a in a larger group, it's easier to lose that because it's, it's like a big party and stuff like that. But in a more intimate setting, with just guitar and piano, you can really feel like you're kind of part of um, of the performance a little bit more. And although sometimes we do also add some other people and instruments to to our gigs when we're playing duo, that is really our our goal. To, to have that interactivity kind of flee through. We kind of try to sell, um, like our phrasing is um, the intimacy of our music. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, we try to sell that. <laughs> Get into the good business of, you know, upcoming shows. Where's the best place for those that want to buy Dual Unity? Kind of let me know what's going on. First of all, it will be available on all streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, all that, Amazon, after May 13th. And then for gigs, the one we have right now is at the Jazz Bistro in Toronto <laughs> on the 31st of May. Uh, that will be our launching like album release party. And then we'll try to book some gigs after that in the summer. In terms of physical CDs, you have to order it like directly through us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know our, our goal is to eventually do a tour, hopefully in the states as well. Once uh, this initial release is over, looking forward to moving forward with all, with all of this stuff going forward. Yeah. Beautiful, gentlemen. Hey, thank you, thank you again for reaching out. Thanks for the CD. I really yeah. dig it. I'm looking forward to putting it on the show and the interview and letting you know the world of jazz listeners get to know you a little better. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Chess interview. We give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Toronto, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to both Jay and Mark for their time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. And for everything Joe Domino related, go to joedomino.com. And if you feel like it, you can kick in a few bucks to the Neon Jazz cause. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.